Robert looked out the window and saw an overcast sky, just as it had been for the last year. The atmosphere was thick with ash from the fires that had been burning all across the country. Firefighters had long given up on containing the blazes. It was just a matter of time until there was no fuel left for the flames. The devastation was already immense, black spires of what used to be trees, entire neighborhoods lay flat, even the rivers and lakes were stained gray and mottled with the floating carcasses of suffocated fish. Many people had already starved to death, unable to leave their homes due to the smoke in the sky. The hospitals had long since run out of supplies, but a steady stream of patients continued to press in with varying amounts of injury. It was normal to see people hobbled over in the streets, charred, bloody where the skin had sloughed off, moaning in agony as infection set in. Sighing as he lowered the blinds, Robert knew what he had to do. Tying a sooty bandana over his face, he opened the door and headed out in search of food and water. I'll be back, Danielle, he called back into the house. His wife coughed in response. Is your asthma acting up again? Yeah, but don't worry about it. Robert was hesitant to leave her alone while she hacked and sputtered, but the growling of his stomach brought him back into the moment. The grocery stores had been looted long ago, but he hoped something edible had been overlooked. He pulled the doors open and entered, using the dim flashlight he brought with him to search around. The light flickered, batteries almost dead. Robert only had a few uses in it before it would never turn on again. Sauntering through the empty aisles, Robert started to lose hope of finding anything useful when he suddenly noticed something glinting on the floor. Picking it up, he read the label, cat food. He ripped the paper off the can, not wanting to admit to himself what he was willing to do in desperation. He continued his scavenger hunt to no avail before returning home. He wondered how Nicole was faring on the coast. He hadn't seen his daughter since the fires started, barring his way west and locking him in as the blaze closed the circumference of the valley. The smoke hit the hardest here, the winds blowing ash down from the mountain forests. After the communication lines cut out, he had been isolated to everything but the immediate area. He wasn't sure whether the fires near the coast had burnt themselves out, but he didn't care since Danielle wasn't well enough to be able to make the trip anyway. He stared at the heart-shaped locket around his neck, the last present he had received from Nicole before all hell broke loose. Inside it was a picture, in fuzzy black and white, the outline of a face barely distinguishable in the dark background. The baby was probably a few months old by now. He wondered if he'd ever get to meet the little boy or girl, hold his grandchild in his arms, read them stories at bedtime. He imagined it with fondness, hoping one day his dream would come true. Entering the house, he shook the dust off of himself and headed to the kitchen for a can opener. He grabbed a fork and mixed up the food, taking in the fishy smell and trying not to gag. Robert approached his wife and bid her to eat, allowing her to consume the whole can, telling her he wasn't hungry when in fact he was starving. Instead, he went to the kitchen to grab himself a glass of water. He could tell by the slow, uneven drip that the well was drying up. He clutched at the locket again, realizing that this was the end.